Gil Pilsen, president of CBS Sports, drops the green flag, and the field is away. And Chevrolet's up in front, nose to nose. Schrader on the inside. Teammates, first time that has ever happened. From the Hendrick Racing Stables of Charlotte, North Carolina. Still even into the back straightaway. Bill Elliott from 13th place. Coming around to complete lap number one of the Daytona 500. Out in front, breaks Waltrip. It's Waltrip on the point, coming by at 195 miles an hour. In second, it's Schrader. And going to third is the Ford of Terry Labonte. A great start, Chris. That was one of the finest starts I have ever seen, Ken. They hit the line absolutely perfectly. It's the beginning of a beautiful day. 200 laps here on this track, and right now, Darrell Waltrip is where he wants to be, out of the group. Waltrip out in front, Schrader maintaining that second spot, and Terry Labonte, who won a 125-mile qualifying race on Thursday, goes into that third position. Remember that Terry Labonte ran the distance without a fuel stop. Waltrip did it a year ago. Did not make it off this year. Here's trouble on car number 21, Neil Bonnet, the Wood Brothers car. And the caution will be coming out now. They've put the caution lights on around the racetrack, and the caution is flying at the start finish line. We are under caution from lap 24 through 27 for the incident by Davey Allison. And here's the Davey Allison story. He is still running. He's in 35th position. He has not gone, now 34th position. He has not gone a lap down. He is still running in the lead lap after he rolled that car wheel to wheel midway down the back straightaway. Look at Schrader come to the inside and move his way up to third. Everybody else just hanging on to the ropes or the rear bumper here. Now, Schrader helped push Dale Earnhardt by Darrell Waltrip as we see Jeff Bodine down on the inside, but that's going to cost him. He's going to go to the back, but here comes Schrader down on the inside. Passes with the greatest of ease. Kenny Schrader, Richard Broom team, Dennis Connors, the crew chief over there. Hendrick Racing Stable, number 25. You know, Ken, there's 27 cars in the lead lap right now. And they're running at about 192 or 193 mile an hour on the track, but the race speed is down to 128.2 because of all the caution slow down. This is a well-oiled, well-traveled, and experienced crew, and they have Schrader in and out, 14.7 seconds. That was a very good pit stop to have changed four tires and to put in a tank of fuel. Now, in contrast, Darrell Walker made a pit stop a moment ago also when we were on a commercial break. He was in for a little over 15 seconds and only took on fuel. He did not take on tires. With the pit, with the pit stops now, with, with the drafting and the restrictor plate, is that going to be more critical then? Well, certainly uh, the... The drafting and fuel mileage is, is going to be critical. It'll become more critical when we get in the last uh, 50 or 60 laps off the race. Well, I think what's important now, if there are no more yellow flag, Ken Schrader's in a great position to win this because he's got enough mileage. It's going to be a coach. Go Mark Martin has crashed. Mark Martin has torn up the Roush Ford. It's in the wall. Two of the three Rick Hendrick Chevrolets are on pit road. Darrell Waltrip comes in directly behind him. Is Jeff Bodine on the Waltrip car. They go to the right-hand side tires. And meanwhile, for Bodine's crew, it looks like it'll be a two, a, a four-tire change, changing on both sides. Now they come around to do both sides on Waltrip as well. There's the leader, Cole Wicke. He has not pitted as yet. No, nor has Darrell Waltrip. Be eight laps to go this time by. Kowicki stays in front. Waltrip stays in second. We're waiting for that third and fourth place car to come about. They still haven't come in. Seventeen is by himself. He's held, but then he's out of gas. Kowicki is out of gas. Ran it lean. Down the back straightaway. He's slowing down. 17. Waltrip in front. I think he's going to take the gamble. I believe he will. What has yeah, he got to lose? To go. That's right. And the yeah. only thing they remember is first place. Kowicki dives onto pit road. Alan Kowicki brings the number seven down. It's over for him. Mike Joy. Hollis makes up a lap on the leader, 17. The question is, how long has Darrell Walter been out on this tank of fuel?
looking back at the leader, Darrell Waltrip, from Rusty Wallace's camera. Final moments of the 31st Daytona 500. Waltrip to the inside. I think he's running on a prayer. <laughs> he's got to be on prayer. I'll, I'll guarantee you he's saying one of prayers. Less than two laps to go. He is drafting all around the track off anyone he can find, trying to conserve fuel. The white flag is out. In the last lap, the interval is immense. It's a question of fuel. Can Waltrip hold out? He could have coasted now, I think. Yeah, he's about close enough now that he could coast across the start finish line and still win. Out of turn four, after 17 years of effort, the Daytona 500 belongs to Franklin, Tennessee's Darrell Waltrip. He's done it. Here comes the Orange Tide Chevrolet toward victory lane. Oh, I won the Daytona 500. I won the Daytona 500. <laughs> Darrell, how long? Wait, wait, wait. This is the, this is the Daytona 500, isn't it? <laughs> you bet Don't it tell is. me it isn't. Thank God! How many years and how long and how hard have you tried to get right here? 17 years. 17 years this year. And it just took a great, I mean, you saw what happened. Jeff and Stevie and Randy and Rick and everybody, they figured everything right for the fraction. I drafted, 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 and it paid off. Darrell Waltrip becomes the 19th different winner of the Great American Race.